Hello everybody, hope that you are very well and welcome to today's video where we're going to be having a bit of a different one than normal. I posted over on Twitter, ask me some questions and I will give you some answers. So uh, today, yeah, I'm going to be going through some of what I feel are the best or most useful questions and uh, yeah, answering them in this video. So hope that you are doing well. Obviously, Bitcoin remains range bound, remains very much sideways. There are trades to be had, 100% there are trades to be had. Uh, obviously, we're talking more so down on the lower term timeframes, but we are seeing volatility within the larger picture. But yeah, the larger picture here is still we're absolutely range bound. And, uh, you know, the best trades are obviously right now for scope slash day traders. Uh, so with that said, let's go on to the questions. Uh, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten questions coming up, starting with this question first. Question that we get quite a lot. <laughs> what leverage should beginners use with small balances? My opinion on this is obviously zero. I think why would you want to use leverage if you're a beginner? That is um, a quick ticket to losing your money. If you're a beginner, you should not be using leverage. Why? Because you're a beginner. <laughs> the, the, the thing is, I see so many people will come, lose money, give up sort of thing. And the number one reason people lose money is because they are using leverage. Leverage is a tool which is effective and it is a good tool when you know what you're doing. E.g. you have to understand the concept of leverage, why leverage exists. Leverage exists for the exchanges to, well, because people think they can trade with more money than they have, uh, rack up the leverage, get liquidated. That's why exchanges put it on there. But if you have a proper knowledge of what you're doing, obviously this means once you have fully learned, you know, for example, you've done all the modules, you've learned and you feel that you are at the level to trade. Leverage can be used then effectively. Let's say you don't want to have all your money on the exchange. Well, then don't place as much money on the exchange, even it out between exchanges. And then you can use the leverage, you know, in an efficient manner, in an efficient and sensible manner to, yeah, trade with more money than you have. But it's not trading out of, I want to trade with this much money when I only have this much. It's, okay, I've got my funds split up between exchanges. I've got my funds split up between assets. I know I need to use times three leverage on this trade, for example, to, you know, get me up to my full position size. Um, but yeah, to answer the question really simply, because I could talk about this for a good hour, Simple answer is none. Don't use leverage when you're a beginner. <laughs> um, next question. As a contender, what do you recommend we do a day? As learning at the moment and watching a few module videos and noting down, should we trade as well as start statistics or just learn? I think this is a really interesting question. Um, my opinion, and I think the opinion of the people that are doing really well in the group are you should watch all of the module videos three times over. Generally speaking, the first time that you watch all of them, you're probably not going to grasp all the concepts. It's going to be a bit confusing, um, you know, and that's just normal because it's the first time you've heard of some of these topics, for example. So I'd say the first time, just watch all the videos. You might not pick it all up, but that's fine. You just want to get through all the videos on the first run. I'd say the second run through is when you are watching the video and actively taking notes. So this on the second run through of, of the modules is when you should have, you know, making notes and, and really start to, you know, grasp and understand the video. And you wouldn't move on to the next video until you've fully understood that one with as much notes as you need. And then on the third run through is when you should, you know, fully understand the concepts. And I think on that third run through is, yeah, when one would imagine at that point you would definitely be in the position to be trading alongside it, recording statistics. It's not to say you cannot trade on the first and second run throughs, but you have to remember your knowledge is probably not sufficient to be doing consistently well at that point, I would have thought. So, you know, my recommendation is yeah, really, really on that third run through, once you've got the real good grasp and understanding of the modules and all of the material, that's when I would say is a good time to start trading. But obviously you could start trading on the first run through, just, just trade with $1, trade with nothing, for example, on a practice account. Um, I just wouldn't uh, really suppose recommend people are trading with a lot of money when they're still on their first or second run throughs. Okay, next question. And this was a funny one. He asked three questions in one, which was a, that was a cool idea, 301. And I'll do the 301 for you quickly. So 
best book for Elliott Waves has to be Frost and Pretcher. It's the best, I think it's the best beginners Elliott Wave book. Uh, what would you recommend to someone to do in their free time when they're not trading or doing technical analysis to get better at trading? Just an interesting question. I suppose like doing something that keeps your mind active, um, you know, I, I think I think one of two things, doing something that keeps your mind active, for example, I don't know, like a Sudoku puzzle, like doing some sort of puzzle based work, um, playing a puzzle based computer game. Uh, you know, I think at the end of the day, you want to do something that keeps your brain active or just simply relax and, and have fun, for example. Um, I, I think it's unhealthy to be, you know, all your time, all your free time, trading, 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 trading. You you need to switch off. You need to relax. You need to spend time with your friends, spend time with your family. Um, so, you know, that's obviously enough. When, I guess there could be a slight correlation. I don't know. Maybe someone's got got some statistics on this or done some reporting. Is there a correlation between better better trading and and uh, you know having a a healthy sort of feeling? And I suppose yes. My my now I think about it. You trade better when you're feeling emotionally well. No, like if you're down in the dumps, really sad, your trading is going to suck. Whereas if you're in a really good place, you're really happy, you're really confident. Naturally, I truly believe your trading is better. Um, so I suppose subconsciously it might not feel like it, but by just being happy, treating your friends, you know, if you're making good profits, go and just buy some, you know, go buy a meal for your friends, go invite them to drinks, go see your family and just, just I don't know, do something that makes you feel good and others feel good. And I, I suppose that will subconsciously in turn help. And how have you been recently? I've been well, apart from England lost the Euros. That was a bit, bit of a downer. But apart from that, well, as best as I could be right now, to be fair, yeah, I suppose. Um, is it not more efficient to use buy? Um, this is a really good question. At the moment, you're obviously getting paid to long Bitcoin. So the funding fees are actually really bullish right now. Uh, so there's obviously times to be aware of when it's better, when it's not better. You could argue right now it's better to just long perpetual swap because you're getting paid funding. Uh, but I agree, quarterly futures is useful. You know, let's say you're trading the, De the December futures and I am trading December futures on Bybit on Ethereum. I think, yeah, the quarterly futures are decent if you have a bit of a longer term plan for the coin or the assets. And um, yeah, you don't want to pay those funding. You know, I suppose the main advantage of it is, is the funding fee. So um, yeah, I think that it, I wouldn't really say more efficient. It depends what the funding fee is like normally on the perpetual swaps. Generally speaking, though, of course, the quarterly futures are going to be better for your longer term swing trades. Um I mean, again, this could this could require a whole hour long video going through the massive pros and cons of each side of it, of course. But to make it in, into a 15 minute video, I'm just going to say, yes, the quarterly futures are useful um, if you use them in the right way they're designed for. And, um, you know, as long as you acknowledge you, there's an expiration date on this, it's not going to last forever. But yeah, if you're looking for the December right now, well, you've got like another five months of the futures contract. So it's a nice time if you've got a medium term time frame perspective and yeah you don't want to be worrying about funding fees uh, what's the difference between the champion and contender membership and somebody replied actually with a pretty decent answer in my opinion the, the primary difference between the champion and the contender membership is really simply i would say the contenders is where you go when you do not want to trade at the moment or like you're at a level where you're a, you know you're basically a beginner and you require the you know you want to just study the modules you just want to you know have some question and answers between trading assistant and um so i'd say the, the contender membership is primarily based at people that are not really trading yet that are just learning that's where we obviously recommend people begin and then i would say champion membership is more for the people that are actively trading uh you know for example that you know want to post ideas want to get ideas i think i would i would argue the main advantage obviously is of a champion membership is having access to my thoughts and not only my thoughts but also the coaches and the all-stars um one would say that this is a pretty major advantage and obviously with the champion membership every sunday you'll have my thoughts given to you for the swing trade perspective on bitcoin last week we obviously done ethereum you know people will you know that's that's in my opinion the primary difference between the two contender is really for the people that are just focused on the education and that's it at the moment and then champion is for the people that are more focused on the actual trading and just want to be in an environment 
you know, being inside of the environment where you have people that are better than you at trading. So like the, like the quote goes, you, you never want to be the cleverest person in the room. So if you join the champions group, it's probably likely that there's better traders than you, which is a good environment to be around now, I think. Um, given that 99% of alts are going to zero, is there any actual altcoin you believe has a future? Do you think Bitcoin will go to zero? I mean, yeah, I'll be the first to admit I'm not a fan of altcoins in the long term. I think the majority are vaporware. You know, I'm, I'm not an altcoin lover, as you probably all know, hence the question. Do I think Bitcoin will go to zero? No, I can't see Bitcoin going to zero. But altcoins, yeah, I think 10 years, a lot of them will be dead. Is there an altcoin that I actually believe in? I mean, I have a, I have a, I have money in some altcoins, but I'm not thinking it's just money that it's like I don't really care if I lose this sort of thing. So, um, do, am I a massive fanatic of these coins? Do I really feel they do amazing in ten years. Well, I feel that there's maybe a small percentage chance, let's say five percent chance that they they are doing well in five years. Um, let's just say one percent chance that they're doing well in five years. I'm happy to assign money to that understanding it's unlikely that it succeeds but at the end of the day it's money that i'm not really that bothered if i lose it so it's worth the risk in that regards but i'm not going to be shouting from the hills about any old coins um what's the best way to withdraw in the uk using faster payments binance is um obviously bad now uh exchanges to do it yeah i think um you know i would recommend you do your own research obviously uh but you know, my thoughts are uh, Bitstamp is decent. Coinbase is obviously acceptable. Uh, Gemini, however you call it. Swissborg uh, is an app. Uh, there's a, quite a few methods. I think the number one, like, biggest one is obviously Coinbase. They don't have the best fees, but they're trusted, and you know it's going to work. So, yeah, obviously the way that generally people are going to on-ramp fiat and off-ramp fiat, fiat currency is deposit fiat, you know, deposit your euros, USD, whatever your currency is into Coinbase or something like Bitstamp, Swissborg, you, you deposit your currency. With that, you would go on to like Bitcoin USD or Bitcoin Great British Pounds, buy the Bitcoin, send the Bitcoin to Bybit, trade on Bybit. Once you've made enough money, you want to withdraw the profits, send the Bitcoin back to Coinbase or Swissborg or whatever the uh, on-ramping fiat currency is, then you would sell that Bitcoin back to Great British Pounds or USD and then withdraw that USD to your bank. It might sound like a, a pain, but the process is very, very, very simple. And yeah, it's, I don't know, it's not really, it's, it's, it's not that time consuming once you've got the process. It's just waiting for the Bitcoin to send. Well, that takes half an hour sometimes. So, well, depends on the transaction times. Um... When making a trade, do you decide if it's a scalp or swing going into it? Do you start some trades as a scalp and end up as a swing trade due to not taking profits? 100%, yes. I think 100% you need to know before you've entered that trade, am I entering this as a scalp trade? Am I entering this as a swing trade? Or am I entering this as a scalp trade that has the potential of a swing trade? This obviously requires the knowledge of, of being able to determine between those three scenarios which I think is an is, is a skill in itself that it can be learned. But yeah, with 100% certainty, you need to know what that trade is before you enter it. And will I sometimes start a trade as a scope and end as a swing? Yes, quite regularly. Uh, I like to do that tactic. Uh, do you have a long-term Bitcoin prediction or is it entirely irrelevant? Um, this is the thing what I long term that what we what you know what's long term <laughs> long term is maybe a month no let's say 10 years into the future do i have a prediction for 10 years into the future no i i think it's kind of irrelevant making such long term predictions um this is why if you if you see me making a long term prediction you got to think it's a, you got to think is daniel joking or trolling right now because I, I just think the way that i view we can consistently and accurately predict the price you know, 10 minutes into the future, one day into the future, one week into the future, one month into the future. If we start pushing above this, the longer the time frame, the harder it is to predict price action. Yeah, we can 
you know, relatively easily predict where price is going to be within 10 minutes, or at least the reaction off of these levels in 10 minutes, one minute into the future sort of thing, because we're seeing the data live as it's coming in. But being able to predict 10 years into the future, well, at the end of the day, what, in my opinion, it's, yeah, it makes it makes for good YouTube content. It makes for an entertaining video now if I come on and say, hey, Bitcoin's going to $1 million. But that's all it is. That's entertainment. That's that's You cannot really think that's serious because there's just too many different steps of what can happen 10 years into the future, for example. You know, 10 minutes from now, we know what's happening. But 10 years into the future, there's so many different things, obstacles in the way that basically render long-term predictions such as 10 years in my opinion totally in my opinion totally useless again people can argue and debate with me that's fine but for me yeah useless uh how can you be disciplined over so long period of time and i think this is a really good question and it all comes down to in my opinion it, it, it comes down to the way that you approach trading and i feel myself and many others in the group will, I know Igor is a good one for this, will approach trading as they approach running a business. So it's like, who, who's going to go out of business first? The person that goes into business, wastes all their cash flow on like irrelevant products and services and X, Y, and Z. Like if you, you know, if you're a business, if you if you know how to run a business, you know, you've got to be disciplined on, you've got to be so treats strategic with what you're buying, where you're placing your money. And the same goes for, for Bitcoin. I'm trying to just make this comparison between having a business and running a business. Basically, what we're trying to, what I'm trying to say here is trading is a business. So we mean we cannot be undisciplined in terms of, oh, I'm just going to throw X amount of money into this trade, X amount, it, you know, just going into all these trades unplanned, unthought through, just willy nilly sort of going into trades left, right and center. No, you have to be disciplined. And that comes down to having a plan, having a schedule, you know, allocating assets correctly, knowing when to hedge, know when to unhedge. You know, so it all comes down to trading is a business. If you treat it as such, you should survive the long term. And then how are you disciplined? Well, you've got to be, you've got to have, I, I suppose, you've got to have the thought process that you are in this for the long term. The undisciplined trader, yeah, they might make money. I don't know. How many people do you think made money from, you know, what? let's say people were buying heavily at around, you know, 10, 15, 20 thousand dollars. How many people, though, do you think made money during all of this rise and then have lost it all on this drop? Oh, I wouldn't be surprised if it's the majority of people. <laughs> yeah. So you've got to be disciplined enough to not just think, oh, yeah, I've made money. And then, you know, one year later, you're like, oh, all the money I made, I've lost. Uh, that's somebody that really doesn't understand market dynamics, I suppose. Um, so, you know, how do you get that discipline? How do you, you know, go for that longevity? It is about having that long term plan. No, it's about taking profits. It's not about watching massive wins eventually turn to losses. You've got to be. And that all comes down to, again, once again, discipline, take profits, know when to hedge, you know, and just e.g. have a plan and, and stick to the plan, essentially. So there we go. That was a bit of a different video than normal, no? <laughs> but nevertheless, I hope that you did enjoy it. You'll have to let me know in the comments down below. Is this a video that you liked? Is this a video that you'd like to see more of into the future? It's not one that I'm going to do every single day. But, um, you know, if you enjoyed this type of content, then please let me know. And I will happily do more of these in, in the future at some point. So, um, yeah. I suppose that that will be my final final words. If you've enjoyed, let me know down below in the comments or just smash that like button, smash the likes. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're doing hope you are doing well. Hope that you are enjoying the trading environment again. There are trades to be had, especially on the altcoins right now. There's a few altcoins in my opinion that are really nice locally. And um yeah. I suppose I'll catch you tomorrow for the contenders live stream. That's that will be my next bit of content. So tomorrow contenders live stream 7 30 um i'll catch you in that if you're a member for everybody else hope you've enjoyed this video i'll see you soon cheers bye